Hi, I'm Paula from Paula's DIY Decor and welcome to my channel. I'm the crafter from Down Under and today I'm going to bring to you six fabulous DIYs, chinoiserie inspired blue and white decor for fall or autumn. So for my first DIY, I want to share with you how I made these gorgeous chinoiserie inspired pumpkins in four different styles. So to get started, you're going to need some alfoil or some tin foil, a chinoiserie inspired blue and white paper napkin, some a jute twine and some white cotton, scissors and some glue. Because the napkin is square, we're going to seal one side of the napkin. So by turning it inside out, you're just gonna run some hot glue down the side of the napkin and you're gonna seal up that napkin. Then using the white uh, cotton thread, you're going to take a needle and you are going to sew the bottom of this rectangle piece together to create the base of the pumpkin. Now I must admit, I was a little bit nervous about using a needle and thread to actually sew the base of this pumpkin together, but it worked really well. It worked just like material because I didn't peel away the layers of the paper napkin, so it was quite sturdy, quite strong, but you still have to be careful. I had to be careful that I didn't poke my nails through the napkin or I wasn't too rough with the napkin. So using some uh, leftover pillow stuffing, I just popped that stuffing inside the base of this pumpkin and then using some jute twine, I just wrapped it around the top of this pumpkin leftover napkin piece and created a knot. After creating the knot, I wrapped the jute twine around a couple of times at the top and then I started to twist it around the pumpkin to start to create that pumpkin form with the indents on the side. And the way to do this is really simple. You just cut your uh, pumpkin visually into quarters and then you wrap the jute twine around in quarters until you have done that uh, enough to create a dent so it starts to look like a pumpkin and then you take your jute twine and you wrap it around in between your quarters to create eights and that's it really you just have a fantastic pumpkin form just uh, adjust the jute twine as you're going along and then when you're finished Make sure that you pull on the jute twine a little bit of tension so that it does go nice and deep into that pillow stuffing but not too tight so you rip the so you don't rip the napkin and then once you're finished doing that you just create another knot and then get another piece of jute twine and then wrap it around that leftover piece of napkin to create your stem and you're going to go round and round and round uh, as high as you like you can trim it down if you only want a short stem or leave it long if you want a long stem and then using your hot glue just seal it off at the top and that's it you've got a beautiful chinoiserie inspired paper napkin which looks absolutely gorgeous it looks really high end just play around with it until you've got the shape that you like and then it's ready for display So for my second DIY, I want to share with you how I made a pumpkin shape using a balloon, some thread and some scissors. So using this orange balloon that I just had in my craft room, I took some more of that pillow stuffing or wadding and I just inserted it into the center of that balloon. We're going to make some mini pumpkin shapes and I can't believe how well this turned out. The latex is super strong, so it was really easy to create the pumpkin form. So I had some brown thread, but you can use whatever color you wish. And then I'm doing uh, the same process as we just did with the chinoiserie pumpkin. We're going to take the brown thread, you're going to twist it around the top of the balloon a few times, and then you're going to create quarters with the thread, pulling, uh, creating some tension with the thread so that it creates those dents into the pillow stuffing. And then you're going to go into quarters and then into eighths again, round and round, pulling a little bit, making sure that you're getting those nice little dents. And how cute is this starting to turn out? It's the cutest little mini orange pumpkin. 
And then to, to create the stem, again, I use some jute twine and some hot glue. Be careful with your hot glue. Make sure it's on a low temperature because you are putting hot glue onto latex, so you don't want it to burn through the pillow. And you're just gonna go round and round again, seal it off with some hot glue at the top to create your stem. And here you go, two absolutely realistic but gorgeous looking mini pumpkins using a balloon. So for this third style of pumpkin, I wanna share with you how I made a pumpkin form using a tea towel in a rounded shape. So I just had a tea towel in my cupboard that I don't use anymore. I really like that, um, that sort of um, farmhousey look to this particular tea towel. The design on it is really um, interesting to me. And so I just cut out a circle using a kitchen, uh, kitchen bowl. And then once I'd cut it out, I used uh, some white needle and thread and I started to sew it together. But I only sewed the edges, so I uh, going in and out. As you can see, when you pull on the thread, it starts to pucker the sides together. And you're gonna keep doing that. Um, and as you're pulling the thread, I then found that it was easy to start to close up the pumpkin form. And you can put the pillow stuffing in as you're going along. So as you sew and you pull the thread together, gently pull it otherwise the thread does break up this is about the second time I've done this video recording because I pulled too hard and I broke the thread and the material of the paper napkin of the um, cloth napkin is quite uh, quite thick so um, I really did have to pull on the thread but put your pillow stuffing in as you're pulling the circle together or the hole together and then using your needle and thread I then just sewed the opening closed and the way to sew it is you go up and down left and right corner to corner so that it puckers nice and neatly into a close and then using the needle I actually pushed it down the center of one side of the pumpkin until it popped out on the reverse side and then turned around and popped the needle through again because the idea here is you want to sew the two pieces of the tea towel together with the wadding or the stuffing around it and that way you start to create a more elongated pumpkin form. Now for my stem, I decided to switch it up a little bit and I created the stem using some foil. So with the foil, I created the base of the stem and then I hot glued it to the top of the pumpkin. And then I grabbed another um, little piece of foil and I basically rolled it up and then squished it together until I was happy with the thickness of the stem. You can always add uh, thickness to the stem by just layering some more alfoil around the existing form. And then I just played around with it, muck, um, you know, pressed it where I needed to press, it gave it a bit of a curve so it looked like a curved pumpkin stem and then I hot glued it together. And once I was, now you could leave it like that if you wanted a silver stem, uh, nobody would know the difference really, it still looks quite elegant, but I wanted to carry my theme of my Shinwasri inspired uh, pumpkins with a bit of a farmhouse twist. So I used again the jute twine and I wrapped it around using the hot glue every now and then to secure the jute twine. I wrapped it all the way around the stem and created this gorgeous farmhouse looking uh, tea towel, beautiful pumpkin ready for display. So for my final pumpkin style, I want to show, share with you how I made a gorgeous velvet pumpkin. So I had some dark blue velvet, which goes beautifully with the Shinwasri inspired design. And I did the same thing, I cut it into a round shape. Now this velvet was a little bit hard to trace using a bowl, so I just popped it in between two embroidery hoops and cut it out. And then using some uh, blue needle and thread, I did exactly the same process as before. I just sewed around the edge of the circle, 
uh, in and out, in and out, puckering, making sure it was puckering and gathering around the edges, stuffed it with some uh, wadding and then I sewed it together in the centre. So the process is the same as the project before, again creating the stem using the alfoil to create the stem shape. You just bunch it up, play around with it until you've got the size and the curvature that you want for your stem. But this time I'm going to use that beautiful chinoiserie blue and white paper napkin to mod podge it onto the stem and this will be able to bring a complete cohesive look to my pumpkin display. All you're going to do is use some mod podge, layer the stem with the Mod Podge, you're going to peel away the layers of the napkin and then what I did was I just used the Mod Podge to adhere the napkin to the stem, gave it an extra coat once it was uh, uh, finished, used my hot glue to pop it on top of the uh, pumpkin and there you have a beautiful velvet soft looking pumpkin. So here they all are together displayed beautifully. The Shimwasari paper napkin pumpkin, the beautiful balloon pumpkin, the velvet pumpkin and of course the tea towel pumpkin. All homemade, all gorgeous, all high-end looking and a really great craft to do if you can't get a hold of any pumpkins locally. So for my fifth DIY, I want to share with you how I made a beautiful pumpkin canvas. So you're going to need a canvas of any size, a template of a pumpkin, some beautiful bronze paper that I found in my craft store, some uh, burlap uh, material, and I've also had a scrap of my chinoiserie ribbon and some of that beautiful blue velvet. So I found on the internet uh, some pumpkin templates which I printed out and then I simply cut out all of my different materials to that pumpkin shape. So this um, bronze paper I found in my local craft store called Spotlight, it's fantastic because it's already uh, adhesive backed so I didn't have to glue it down. And then using that beautiful blue velvet material, I simply glued the velvet onto the back of the canvas, tucking in the corners so that they wouldn't show. And there I've got a beautiful background there with that gorgeous, lush, deep blue velvet. So I then just peeled off the backing of the bronze paper, popped that uh, pumpkin down onto the left-hand side of my canvas, and then used only just the slightest bit of glue for the burlap uh, pumpkin so it wouldn't come through. I also glued that one down to the right-hand side. And then for the chinoiserie material pumpkin, I simply put the glue on the edges of the pumpkin because I wanted to uh, stuff the inside of the chidwasri pumpkin in the center so that it had a more raised sort of look. I wanted to create some dimension with this particular design and I thought it turned out so, so cute. And I really loved the three different, completely different materials. I thought it was interesting and unique and I really, I thought it just turned out so, so good. And I apologize for that footage. I don't know why it was so blurry. And then when I finished, I thought it still needed a little something. So I used some uh, of this beautiful fall or autumn colored uh, ribbon and I created little bows and just using my hot glue attached them to the top of each pumpkin. So here is my beautiful fall velvet pumpkin canvas with the raised pumpkin in the center. Beautiful coordinating colors, nice, deep and rich. I absolutely love it. So for my last DIY, I want to share with you how I made these gorgeous chinoiserie inspired wooden towering tumbling block pumpkins. This DIY, I used some towering tumbling blocks, this beautiful blue and white chinoiserie inspired paper napkin, some of that burlap paper, some white paint and some hot glue. 
So I used my hot glue to create the first shape and by putting some hot glue down the side of one of the towering tumbling blocks, I then turned the second one in the opposite direction and glued it together. For most of this uh, particular design, I'm not actually going to try to explain it because it's really, really hard. I think it's easier if you just take a look at the video and you'll get the idea. But basically, if you put your tumbling blocks in perpendicular style, so you lay one and then you put the next one in a perpendicular angle, then you start to create the multi-dimensional pumpkin shape. If you like in this video, consider subscribing to my channel. I love to create home decor, seasonal decor and beautiful tablescapes. If you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so happy that you stopped by. And for my existing subscribers, thank you so much for returning to my channel and leaving me those beautiful comments that I absolutely love reading every week. I do try really hard to respond to every single one of them. You absolutely inspire me with your positive feedback and I'm so glad that you enjoy this crafting journey along with me. So the secret to this particular DIY, once you've started to put together, is that we want to, or I wanted to, cover each one of these wooden blocks. So for the burlap one, I only covered one side of each block, and then using a little bit of raffia, I then just hot glued it on the top to cover up that gap. And you'll see that as I create each of the remaining two uh, wooden pumpkins, I covered each one of them as well with a different material. So to create the little pumpkin stem, I had some um, wooden sticks that I actually found along the beach. Um, they're pretty, it's pretty soft wood, so it was very easy to cut. You can just use a box cutter or some really strong scissors. And then I used some of this gold paint to cover it up because in my mind, I thought I might do some gold stems, but then I realized that the gold would look good with the chinoiserie style wooden block. And for the velvet one, I wanted a darker wooden stem. So I went back and I painted over my second uh, stem with some dark brown acrylic paint. So for the second wooden pumpkin, I covered two tumbling block uh, tumbling blocks that I had glued together with this dark blue velvet. Um, take care when you're wrapping this uh, velvet not to burn your fingers. If you've got some finger protectors, I suggest you use them. Um, and then I just wrapped it around and tucked in the corners and cut off anything that was sticking out. And that was the beginning of the um, base of this particular pumpkin form. And then I did the same with two more single blocks. I covered them up with the blue velvet using the hot glue, wrapped it like a present, and then I glued those two single blocks to the double block in a cross, in a cross shape. And then for the third wooden pumpkin, I simply created exactly the same style as the very first one using one, two, three, four, five, ten uh, blocks. And then I simply added an extra layer, so like a second story. And I simply followed the original pattern and using my hot glue created the second uh, level of wooden tumbling block on top and that way I had a large, medium and small sized pumpkin as part of this display. Once I was completed with my second 
layer, so my second uh, story, if you like, of this pumpkin design. I then painted it white because after that I wanted to Mod Podge my blue and white napkin, um, chinoiserie inspired napkin. And I always find that with uh, blue and white napkins, it comes out a lot more crisper if it's sitting on top of a white base. Once the paint was dry, I just layered uh, a nice thick coat of Mod Podge and then gently adhered the blue and white paper napkin onto the wooden um, pumpkin using my paintbrush to smooth out and my fingers to smooth out any wrinkles or any bubbles. It's pretty easy if you're gentle and of course if you use a lot of Mod Podge it makes it much easier to spread as well. So once I had adhered the paper napkin to the uh, wooden um, pumpkin I then put an extra layer of Mod Podge over the top, cut off the edges and had so that I could get some nice clean lines. You can use some uh, sandpaper to just take off the edges if you like. Um, clip off or cut off any excess paper napkin so you get some nice smooth finishes and then you've got a beautiful chinoiserie inspired wooden pumpkin. It's unique in its design. I haven't seen it anywhere else. I absolutely love it. It goes with all of my blue and white decor and again use some of that raffia to just cover up the gap in the top of the pumpkin and then using my hot glue put the beautiful little wooden um, uh, pumpkin stems onto the top and there you have a beautiful trio of wooden pumpkins by simply using some towering tumbling blocks a little bit of imagination whatever materials you've got in your home to create a unique display for fall or for autumn leave me a comment and let me know if you're going to recreate these diys and i really hope you've enjoyed this week's episode i've thoroughly enjoyed making it with you i hope you have a great week and i'll see you next time bye